Have you heard of David Goggins? Yeah, I have heard of David Goggins, yeah. He loves stretching, doesn't he? Yeah, I read his book. He, at some point, stretched for six hours a day. That just sounds absurd. Can that actually be beneficial? Put it in the context of who David Goggins yeah. is, like the man who did like 4,000 pull-ups in a day. Like, that's probably a little bit too much. Yeah. That's what the guy does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's mad. The way that we do education now does cater more towards women. Especially for young men. It's hard to sit still in those young years because of our biology. Men or the hunters getting out there, you know, being wild. Yeah, that's a great point. For sure, you're you're correct that we need to supplement sort of sitting in the classroom with other modes of learning. I think it's reasonable to say that there are differences in the way that men and women learn. Look at Mr. Beast. He's the biggest YouTuber right now. He posts maybe once a month. I think we're starting to see creators put more work into one video and post less frequently than just mash out a ton of videos every single day. Yeah, and obviously here is like the disclaimer that for these people, frequency must go with like the quality. The lower frequency must mean that you are putting a bit more time into these videos. And this is why you're uploading less frequently when you produce high quality content people will always just want to watch it when you get to like kind of the age 18 20 i feel like that's a usual time people start to explore what their body is capable of usually for aesthetic reasons i feel like that's <laughs> the typical story of the, yeah. the male getting into fitness first starting off wanting to change their physique and then they kind of learn a bit about what fitness is about and what their bodies are capable of i think it's an important thing for young men is that physical challenge i remember at 18 like a built for me and massive amount of confidence that led to so many things outside of just lifting weights a good work ethic you learn to work hard you notice that hard work pays off you can transfer that to other aspects of your life you know without sounding too cliche i think understanding that you have quite a lot of control over yeah. many aspects of your life if you're not athletic or if you're you feel weak in certain aspects it's very easy to just focus and, and put some time and be consistent and you will make progress towards it and it applies with, with life with business with, with lots of things with relationships minecraft i think is unique in the brain and type of content you can get from that single game. It's brilliant. It's phenomenal. It crosses generations. Uh -huh. It is a masterpiece. And the fact of the matter is, I don't think there's a word where I, I don't want to see that now exist. On the surface, it looks fairly innocuous. It looks very basic. People play it for so many different reasons. Lots of people play Minecraft just to play Minecraft. And there's people who watch people play Minecraft, maybe not play Minecraft themselves. And there's people who make videos about playing Minecraft or play mods of Minecraft. And the list goes yeah. on and on yeah. and on and on. Your famous trans transformation video which by the way you have one of the most famous one year transformation videos on youtube i think it has 25 million views at this point the same day that i saw this video i started my own calisthenics journey it's crazy how much influence that a youtube video can have on someone it's pretty amazing to hear something like that that i had some kind of influence in the world it's fascinating right the both of us we live in this small country denmark and yet we have the ability to influence people all around the globe you must have inspired hundreds if not thousands of people from our little humble country Denmark right if you have really tight muscles and you stretch you relieve the muscles but tight muscles is that a cause for injury as far as I'm aware the data on that is, isn't super concrete so you can't think of, of tissue as being like physically tight you can't really think of it like an elastic band the stretch feeling that you get is something called the stretch reflex basically is your body putting the brakes on it, it's a protective reflex and it's like whoa we don't know what's happening past this point we haven't experienced this before maybe something bad might happen so I'm gonna put the brakes on the stretch reflex actually a contraction of the muscle so much the same as if you're doing a bicep curl and it just stops you from going any further and to some extent it's involuntary the early stages of stretching and flexibility comes from Literally, you getting better at tolerating that feeling. Stretching hurts, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's pain there's pain with stretching Absolutely, yeah? yeah the more you stretch you get better at tolerating that pain but ultimately that feeling of tightness is always going to be there at the end of your range of motions i can do front splits or middle splits but i still feel tight mm. it's just that where i feel tight is, is is a much further degree than it was beforehand do you think there will be a future where formal education will be pushed aside and people will only just learn by themselves probably not because as human beings even if the raw content is out there that may be enough for sufficiently motivated people but many people prefer or they do better in a social context mm. when you're a teenager or a young person it's not easy to be motivated to go to school but if you have sort of this formal structure that you're there already you have to go to avoid getting marked absent and besides all your friends are in class you might as well go to class these kinds of things are little tricks we play to help us learn the things that we need to learn all of the scams I've seen with influencers that's really disgusting the scams completely disgusting but it's also the the influencers chatting shit.
about stuff that they don't understand yeah. then it backfires even if they weren't intentionally scamming people because it's such an obtuse thing to understand there's always that risk and it's always like a higher risk if the market's that unstable and you're an influencer who kind of knows what you're doing but not really you really shouldn't be pushing that out to these people that you have an impression over that are very impressionable to you specifically if you find something you really mm. love be careful you don't burn out i completely overdid it and it completely took over my personality I identified way too much with it and it was basically the only thing I thought of and cared about. If that happens, then there is a higher chance of you suddenly burning out and yeah. having to step away from it. That can be the danger of identifying too much with something. Diet does play a role in your mental health. Normally, I try to eat really healthy. I've let myself go a bit. I have eaten just whatever, so much bad food. One thing that I noticed by eating so bad, my mental health suffered from it. Not just that, so many things. I felt sluggish. I felt tired. I struggle a bit more getting up in the morning. I feel like I get easily more irritated. I feel brain fog every now and then. I don't know how people do it, how people eat junk food every single day. I don't feel great. And my workouts have suffered. My cardio especially. I mean, like just the way I feel internally, the energy I have is low. I don't have as much energy as I usually have. Sleep is a very big thing. Very, very important. It will mess your mental up so much if yes. you're not sleeping. I think of it this way. I could work 20 hours and sleep for four hours, or I could work for 16 hours and sleep for eight hours. I think working 16 hours, the quality of those work hours yeah. would be better than the 20 hours because I got more sleep. I remember towards the end of last year, I was like forcing myself to be awake so I could feel like I was being productive. But I just sit there completely zoned out. And then I would go back by and I'd hardly done any work because mm -hmm. I couldn't function. Sleep and exercise in particular, those two things, two of the biggest secrets to success, honestly no matter what the career is. Exercise is a big thing for me. Going out for a run just clears my head so much. Christmas is something I used to celebrate as a child, but right now I barely get time to do any of that. If you are in the social media game, to make things happen 24 seven, your time is probably taken. Either you're thinking about the idea for the next video, or you're making it and the little time you get in between you sleep yeah the grind is real when you do social media if the teacher is not excited about what they're teaching then it's hard to get the students excited about it i think any subject can be made interesting most people who think that they're not good at mathematics or don't like mathematics it's probably some teacher's fault somewhere along the way that made it seem boring and vice versa i'd say most people who do like mathematics or science or history or whatever subject it's often because they had a teacher who conveyed that interest in that that passion for the subject and that's what gets students excited. But I think the best educators can read the classroom and read the students and understand what they need. Most of my growing up, the world has always looked like this. People have been afraid to speak their mind. You have to be careful what you say because people are going to attack you. When you were younger, was the world a bit different? The way I talk is how me and my friends spoke to each other. The meanest sh I think's ever been said to me has been by some of my best friends. But it, to me, that's that's almost love. You're being truthful with somebody. Your generation is societal lies. Everybody needs to be super nice to each other. Like your generation openly lies straight to each other's face. The demands of you guys lying to each other completely devoids you of any like social contract of trusting each other. There's no trust amongst you. I feel bad for your generation. They need people to agree with them, whether it affects them or not. Where do you see copyright in NFTs? That is so back in the days I used to make what was called sprite rights, which were these pixelated fusions of Pokemon, basically. I used to make these back when I was like 10 years old. So I looked back at them and I thought these would make a good NFT project. Sort of as I went along with it, I my pants by the thought of copyright. Say the, the project that I made blew up and I made a lot of money from it. Nintendo could sue me because I'm using their property. <laughs> Yeah. That that scared yeah. me, so I deleted the project. You see so many NFT projects just ripping off copyrighted property all the time. And I even see a lot of it sell yeah. and people make money off of it. So really interested to see what's going to happen to those people once the big companies start noticing this. Back with the PewDiePie versus T-Series deal, that was when India got a lot more access to the internet. Back in 2011, 2012, the concept of unlimited internet was not 
very much available into the rural areas. There, the only internet that was available to you was the internet on your phone. One GB of data would cost you $10. So before opening any YouTube video, I had to think, all right, is this worth opening? Is this worth wasting my data on it? Someone who likes to paint in their living room by themselves, is that not art because it's not shown to anybody? Yes, I think by definition, it's not art, it's therapy. Just as I think as somebody writing a journal, you know, in a journal workshop, that's not art either. That's therapy. There's nothing wrong with it and it might make you feel better. It's only art if it follows rules. If you're just doing it randomly without any knowledge of that tradition or the other tradition, then it's just, uh, what is it? To be crass, it's a form of masturbation. To be psychological, it's a form of therapy, but it's not art. Art is something that's recognized and established. Maybe a painter does start off in the living room painting colors that are pretty. If somebody walks into the living room and goes, oh my God, that is stunning. It changes everything. Just that comment changes the nature of the activity. And that's the kind of birth of art. You talked a lot about Lisa. We literally call these people influencers. She's influencing people to act the way she acts, buy the products she buys, eat the food she eats. Obesity is absolutely, had been studied multiple times, contagious via social interaction. Watching these people eat themselves into ill health is tragic alone, yet alone the fact that the platform they're on pushes them forward, forward also. There's Lizzo, there's also like the mukbang channels. That is very clearly against the terms of service agreement of YouTube. It is eating disorder behavior, it is self-harm, but yet not only is it allowed on the platform, it is highly, highly, highly in the suggested feed, and it is always monetized with multiple premium ads. When you see other people discuss how negative it is, and then you see their videos are massively suppressed and demonetized for speaking out against those things, I just think we've got, reached a stage where the social media platforms are about money. I just think that if we want to have a realistic conversation about all this stuff, we're going to eventually have to have a realistic conversation with how negative it actually is for our society. How geometry shows that the earth is not flat. From two different cities, you can look up and see the moon at different angles, but you see the same face of the moon. A full moon is up all night and it stays the same size in the sky the whole time. If it were really going over a flat plane, then it would be getting bigger and bigger uh, yeah. than smaller and smaller. So just simple geometry, the idea of the law of perspective. I also never understood how you can argue that the earth is flat when you can literally fly from America to Asia and I can fly from Europe to America. So how would that work if the, the earth is flat? Uh it wouldn't. <laughs> I've heard great things about Denmark. Yeah? I would live there for sure. You guys have free healthcare, low crime rates, free education. Like We get paid to go to school when we turn 18. That's completely backwards from any other place in this world. Everywhere should be like Denmark. I feel slightly the opposite because I feel like it kind of contributes to people being soft, being handed everything to you. Of course, free healthcare, free education, I'm all for it. I think people should have equal accessibility to that. When you get paid to go to school, we might cross the line. Yeah, that's crazy. That's <laughs> yeah. crazy. On the other hand, though, we pay 40 to 50% in taxes. Oh, wow. Okay. The highest engagement that I've noticed in the fitness industry by far is Noel Dazel. Uh, he's a cool guy. Redonkulous engagement. Once you're big enough, people will try to make videos just to get the controversy going so they can get views. There was a comment on someone critiquing Noel. Well, Noel does steroids. Well, you know, like he, he, he says he does it. Yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> and one of the comments was the guy had said, all his information is simple. All it took was a buff guy to say it. And one of the top comments was, it didn't take a buff guy to say it. It took a friendly, relatable guy mm. to say it. And he's buff. I mean, the guy's got muscle for days. I mean, it's it's out there. Everyone he, he's knows. a big he's, man. You look at the guy, you know. He's a big right? man.